Uh, it's a bit misty this morning. It's quite cold, chilly up here. But I think the sun's due to come out. Down the back lane. If you enjoy our channel, please subscribe as it really helps the channel grow. So please give us a like and a comment as we really love to hear from you. But we know on the TVs it's a bit more complex. In the last episode, Stu celebrated his 60th birthday and we had an amazing meal out at the Wilton Arms. And we found a great park up where we were entertained by the paragliders who sailed through the winds. So we're on our way to Firth Campers uh, this morning, um, just purely because of the kitchen lights, as I said, uh, just needs replacing, so I'm sure that'll be a hour max. Oh, it was about 10 o'clock, up to about 10, 11 o'clock. There was a few cars there, kids just coming up, parking up, music in the cars, didn't bother me. I think, Jane, you heard somebody around mid about midnight, was it? Yeah, yeah. But I don't think it was, it wasn't No, problem. they weren't doing anything wrong. Jane was a bit nervous. No, no, I wasn't nervous. I was just a bit uncomfortable that I was trying to get to sleep. <laughs> I don't know, it just felt wrong. It's the first time we'd sort of been in a car park yeah. where there'd been, I guess, uh, late at night noise. Yeah. So in the background there, you can hear Jane cleaning her teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she's filming, she's multitasking. It was just such a lovely view, I just sort of <laughs> <laughs> couldn't turn it off. She didn't know whether to carry on cleaning her teeth or take the picture. Of course, take the picture. Jane's complaining, I'm dawdling. Well, since Stu's retired, he seems to have... Slow down, which is what you asked me to the do. The 40, the 60 speed no. limit is now. You said you, when you retire, you've got to slow down. So I slow I down. I've been on the now road. I'm not going fast enough. And then, but and no. I'm going on a speed awareness course. You've just said that you've got somebody up your backside, and that's because you're going 40 in the 60. Down a back lane. That valley was not a back lane. Don't think so. Whenever you followed people doing 40 in the 60, you've always. <laughs> Well, perhaps <coughs> they were right. Now you're one of those. I'm one of those. Yeah. It's a beautiful morning. Surprisingly, it suddenly uh, just burst out, doesn't it? We've come down below the cloud line. It's beautiful down here. It's a lovely road, this. It's, it's, it's quite a main drag between Manchester and Sheffield. West to east. And we approach a place that seems iconic, where there's a caravan 20 metres from the road and it's been trashed by the elements over many years and we can never quite work out why it's never been removed. Then we arrive at Firth Campers who create all the auto campers. And we leave Harry with Carl and his team and we set off into Penistone for a walk around for about an hour. There's some fish, <laughs> fish there, I've just seen a fish there. That's the river, there it is there, look, see? To the circle. Yeah, yeah. He's come to the surface. A little brown trout. There's a colourful bird, I don't know what that is. Must have been uh, for the horses drinking. So as we're walking around Penniston, there's a lot of bike emblems and I think the Tour de Yorkshire must come through here. It's a beautiful day. It's a lovely little place. Some more bike on the top of the shops there. So I think the, uh, as I say, the Tour must come through here. It's got a collection of small shops, restaurants, bars. 
So that's uh, St John the Baptist Church, Peniston and Thurlston. And we sit in the sun happily watching the day go by. Blimey, he must have been going to speed to get up there. So this uh, cinema was going from 1914 to 2014. So it's 100 years plus now. And next to it is the council offices sign at 1913 and by the looks of it there used to be a free library although that looks a bit more derelict now. This award-winning structure is called the barn and it was commissioned in 2010 and it's one of the largest public timber structures in the UK and I believe they hold a market here twice a week although we've never managed to catch it when we've been here. And we stock up on some provisions for the day. Campervanning is very much a shop-on-the-go approach for us. And after about an hour or so, we head back to pick up Harry on a job well done, as always, by Carl and the team. And we decide to head towards a nearby National Trust site, and it's Wentworth Castle and Gardens. And it's pretty quiet when we park up and it looks a mixture of buildings, formal gardens and larger walks through the estate. This is the Long Barn, there's a cafe and toilets here. It's an impressive building, it's a stunning day as well. A bit of a nip in the air but it's uh, nice in the sun. There's all walks around the parkland. Are you interested in the history of yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, are you, are you local? No, no, we're, we're travelling from Shropshire. Right, OK, I didn't think so. So, about six miles towards Rotherham from here, there's a huge house called Wentworth Wood House. OK. It's got the longest frontage of any house in Europe. Oh, um, and, and the family who owned that, the, uh, the Wentworth family, it's actually just in a village of, of Wentworth. I can't the, the guy who built this basically in, expected to inherit Wentworth Woodhouse back in 17, early 1700s. Thomas Wentworth, who actually built this, decided he didn't need that, he didn't need the hassle, so he came and built this just to show off. So we just spoke to one of the volunteers there and he was telling us this is, uh, it's all a bit of an illusion this is, this is uh, was a house built just for show, it was never really lived in, it's now a further education college, um, you can't actually go in there, uh, it's all, it's sort of been uh, I guess changed slightly t to, uh, for the practicality of, uh, of learning. So on this side apparently uh, this was a later phase of building and it's done in a different style to the front side, as you can see there's columns on, on this side and this was done apparently after he, he fell out of grace um, after Queen Anne died. So around the grounds apparently there's several monuments that he then built this being one of them in the distance and there's deer down in the deer park you can see and we start off with a walk through the more formal gardens This tree's got a bit of a story to tell, I'm sure. But it's sprouting new life. And we soon come across this table tennis table and that can never be missed as Stu and I are really competitive. <laughs> And who won? Who won, Jane? Or who lost? Uh, 
I wasn't doing so good. Okay, she'll so never admit defeat. The National Trust is working really hard at the moment with the community to help restore these gardens, with 18th century species of the day being replanted. And this shows the attention to the level of detail. We're going to go and get warmed up now in the conservatory. The conservatory was built in 1885, but in the early 1900s it started to fall into disrepair. And unbelievably, it stayed that way until 2004 when funding started to come in for its restoration. But the building wasn't actually started till 2012. And they've done an incredible job and it provides a nice warming area on a windy day. and we head from the formal gardens to the castle at the top of the estate, passing through the peaceful natural surroundings. So guys, does that work? Or is that spoiling the view? I'm not sure. I know what I'd be doing. But if this is my seat, that would be... That would be gone. Yeah. Answers in the comments. Not sure if it works. Lots of people making their way to the top castle, which was the treehouse for the kids. Yeah. It was built for the treehouse for the kids, basically. Well, built for the built kids to play, kids. kids to play in, basically. So in 1727, Thomas Wentworth began building this folly for his kids. He wanted to give the impression the estate had been in the family for centuries. In fact, he'd only bought it in 1708. But still an old building in real terms. Okay, one of us took the wrong way. I don't think that. <laughs> so that's uh, Wentworth Castle. Definitely worth uh, a visit, especially if you're a National Trust member anyway, because it's obviously uh, all included. Um, it's got some nice walks around the estate. We haven't gone on those. We've walked just walked, walked around the inner estate, but they've got a lot of parkland walks. That's probably worth uh, worth exploring as well. And it's time to head out of the estate and find a place for lunch, as unfortunately the car park is a bit too slopey for a brew up. So we decide to head towards a couple of reservoirs to find a pull in. So we've just stopped for lunch and we'll buy a little reservoir. So this is a cobbled together meal. We're having a baguette, ham baguette and Jane's having sawdust compacted together called rice cakes. Cool. But it says Healthy. with spelt, chia and quinoa. Yum. Now unfortunately we didn't film what happened as we pulled away. We approached a 90 degree bend that was a single track when we were faced with a car and a low loader rear down lorry. Stu took evasive action but was then stuck on an uphill bend and Harry had no grip and to say it was stressful is an understatement. Right, do you want me to guess out? Can you go back down? Oh, 
God, I tell you what, if there's somebody else there, they can piss off. Come on, Harry. Oh, oh that was stressful. You did really well then. So after that bit of excitement, we plotted a route back to the Peak District to an area west of Castleton, overlooked by Mantor. And near Castleton, we noticed the imposing cement works. Our destination is at the top of Winnitz Pass. And when we arrive it's a bit slopey and in places it's only really suitable for short vehicles. And as usual we spend ages parking. No, you're okay. Stop, stop! And Stu eventually gets out the ramps. And we end up moving Harry a second time and once again getting back up on the ramps. And I'm always anxious when he drives up on the ramps and as usual this doesn't help. <laughs> and we finally get settled as we plan to be here a couple of nights before moving down to Castleton. And once again we've got a view that we love the most, with the green valleys and the dramatic skylines filling the view. And there is that cement factory again. That's a good old van conversion with an urban paintwork on it. And we go for a short walk passing Blue Cross Cabins, where you can go and visit the mines for the unique blue stones. Harry there. We're on security watch. <laughs> yeah. And we've come across these couple of micro lights but they look like they've recently landed. And it's pretty windy today so unfortunately there's no flying for Tom the drone. So we've had a mini disaster with the, we're going to have a cellar uh, tonight and we still are. It's going to be lacking a few things in as much as the celery has uh, was gone off and liquefied a bit and also the pepper and the tomatoes. So we're going to make do with what we've got because we are where we are. So we're going to have a lettuce, onion, carrot, spring onion, cucumber, feta salad. That's as much as I can make out of this. This is turning into a bush tucker trial at the moment. <laughs> I'm trying to make a meal out of what we got left. <laughs> <laughs> Carrot, cucumber, lettuce, um, scraggy end of spring onion. <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed that episode. And if so, please give us a like and subscribe. And please join us in the next episode where we attempt to walk to the top of Mantor. Sad and